lesser male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? Square Pimp Brigade, GYBB, get your bowls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution's being podcasted, and I am excited. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. We got a special guest in the building, but first and foremost, Harry, what's going on with you? Oh, man, you know me. I'm living up, I'm living it up, Dante. I'm yes. living it up. I'm, I'm flying high, as the kids say. Is that what the kids say? I don't know what the kids say. I don't, I don't know, but you, you look a little cranky today. No? Cranky? Little cranky. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Maybe. I can see it in you. But we'll, we'll get into that. Cause let, let's talk about it. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, but first, let me introduce my guest. Uh, like, this is crazy because I watched this motherfucker grow the fuck up. Um, just did this Netflix thing on Pete Davidson and Friends. Saw him with his fucking 12 year swagger on stage was just like, uh, I was I was loving it. Give it up for my man Jordan Rock. <laughs> what up, Jordan Rock? What up, Yeah, man? what up? Cooler, man. I'm cooling. Uh I'm a weekend, you know. Uh just, you know, trying to figure out life now. Yeah, I it's funny because I um you know, watching that watching you and nico and stuff i i watched y'all motherfuckers when y'all first hit the scene and just you know as youngins you know just starting out and it's just really dope to see motherfuckers with that kind of fuck you confidence on stage (laughs) you gotta bring it back man you gotta bring it back like fuck this audience man i'm I'm over that like like me yeah nah man yeah, I I've been doing this. I know what the fuck I'm doing. You motherfuckers are plumbers and secretaries. Let me tell you what this thing is about. And it's 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 crazy how when you start doing that, you give them no option but to to fuck with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just yeah. Either hate me or fuck with me. Yeah, my my I, I used to get on stage and it used to be like, "Yo, like me." You trying to tell a joke immediately like blah 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 blah. Now I'm like like Bro, I don't even like some people want to go ride the wave. I'm like, bro, I don't even want I don't even want that nigga's laughs. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and we know what's worse when you see a, a motherfucker that you don't respect artistically and then you mad at the audience cuz they laughing at him cuz he's hacky and you like I Yeah. What does it say about them if you like him and me? Um <laughs> uh, See, that's why I've been trying to perform for less white people. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? It's both, man. Cause it's dog. You know how you do. You when you do the black rooms, I like a mixed crowd. I'll say I like a mixed crowd. I like I like having a nice mix so we can bounce and we can go. Cause uh, black people don't really give a fuck about politics. Huh. White people don't really give a fuck about black people shit. Yeah. So I need both of them there for us to bounce. So they, they feel like they need to be on their best behavior. It's like companies here. Yeah, yeah. And then they, and they, it's funny because. I've always said black audiences a lot of times they don't they don't fuck with sarcasm. And, and check <laughs> check check this out. If you think about this, you're gonna you'll you're a smart dude, you'll get it. Sarcasm is saying something that you don't mean, but saying something without really saying it. And yeah. if you, and you're a Brooklyn dude, so it's like well, some yo if somebody say something that they don't they ain't really saying, you like so what you saying, my nigga? You know what I mean? It's like, what you trying to say, yo? Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's offensive. Sarcasm is offensive because it's dishonest. Where white people invented sarcasm because they always say some shit without not saying it. And so Chitlin Circuit base, base level black comedy is like, nigga, it's some funny shit. Tell me what happened. Don't say nothing that I got a fake fuck you. Like, what are you really trying to say? And so we see that as offensive in a way. And it's weird because black folks code switch. We we have to know how to code switch. So when when you have what you're saying is when you have a mixed audience, they're like, oh, I got it. I need to get the sarcasm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know, man. Black comedy... It's like it's like in, it's not even just the chitlin circuit anymore. I feel like it's it's like three levels of black comedy. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It, there's bougie black comedy. There's regular black comedy, and then there's nigga comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it's a it's a weird thing because I, I was I say this to Harry all the time. Mm. One of the things about all these social media and the streaming services, like it used to be, if you had a movie and it was black people in it, it was a black movie, and it was black movie was a genre. Just yes, black people in it, and now it was actually a good genre too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a good genre. All tossed together. Now you can have black horror. You can have black romance. You got black suspense. You can have black westerns. You could have a mixture of black. You could take a Listen, regular. I will say this though: black movies have been really bad since Vivica A. Fox stopped working with Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like every every black movie since that has looked like a lifetime. Movie. <laughs> well, I think there's still there's still struggles and there's still places that that cater to it and others that don't. Like Stars is open to a lot of black programming. Like stars, stars, great. Home, stars, like I just got into uh, my girl got into P Valley. Oh, P Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Love great. Valley. It's great. I didn't want I, at first. It was like too much for me. Like first season. First season. We're still watching the first season. season. Is a little shaky because now they got money behind them. So now yeah. they, it ain't gritty no more. But no, stars. Let me tell you, man. Stars. Yeah. Every the worst thing that can happen to a TV show on stars is niggas start watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, it gets too popular. Yeah. Anything, anytime something gets popular on stars, they just lose their mind. Yeah. Why do you think that is, though? Greed. <laughs> how we can make money and how can we fuck it up in the process of. But I mean, I don't even think, you know, I think with the streaming services, you don't even necessarily look at movies per se. Like everything is in the same genre series, tell you know, it's all the same. It's kind of the same thing it's just that when they take an interest in it then then the, the non-creative start sticking their toe in the water and and fucking it up so it is it is what it is but i i do like the fact that it's given a lot of other people other cultures an opportunity to to kind of do their art so which i think is interesting even about comedy now what even in comedy you could be different there's different they're catering to different levels of i mean there's a whole african genre which is a whole which is separate from african americans i just watched this movie i don't know if you saw this movie on, on netflix uh triple r no nah. it's an indian movie like about colin is it one of the dopest action flicks i've seen it's closed caption check it out it's three hours one of the dopest movies I've seen in a fucking long time. Even the fucking da, 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 the dancing and shit is doper than the dancing we we're uh, accustomed to. You know? oh, easily, man. Foreign films are, are the shit because American films are limited. Yeah. And then also foreign films. That's a big thing about foreign films. People in foreign countries don't go to the movies like us. Yeah. So they might go see one movie a year. So when they go see a movie, that shit better be a comedy, an action movie, a romance. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, sci-fi. Like they got everything. In yeah, yeah. The thing. Um, I, the, here's the thing with the fans. Like I said, I, I watched Jordan grow up, man. I remember when Jordan was a young man, was running around with that, that little cutie, right? And and <laughs> the little the little light skin joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like running with her tight, and then it was like you was. I remember you saying to me, "Dog, I don't like." Uh, like I was what? like, yo, man, I'm playing house right now. I just woke up one day and was like, man, I'm playing house. I'm fucking lying to myself. Yeah. Also, yeah. Hadn't, I hadn't had a whole phase yet, neither. Yeah, right, right. Because this was early on you hooked up. Er real early. Yeah, 21 to 25, I lived with my girlfriend. Wow. Oh, that's prime learning years. Yeah, that's good that's learning years. Yeah, I've been married. What are you talking about? Prime. <laughs> and then you just, what did you just wake up and just decide? It's like, what? Well, I remember seeing you at New York Comedy Club where you were just disgusted. <laughs> and I always I have to tell you, I always have that feel like I could feel a, a, I could feel a disturbance in the force. Mm. I'm like, John, you you all right? You all right? You remember when I read? I was yeah. like, all right, what, what's going? Where you? Where your shorty at? You like, man? That always starts like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like what happened that made you go? Uh, in that relationship. What was it's? I, you know what it was? They removed themselves from what I was doing. What do you mean? 
I was really into this person, but I, I guess they didn't see the vision of what I was going for. And then as I started to climb and get more successful, instead of it, when I told them something good, they being like, oh, shit, it's lit. You could feel them be like, all right, so how do I fit into this? Uh, right, right. And then, you know, then things just kept on going up. Like I booked love on Netflix. I had to go to L.A. How long you been in love now? Uh, well, I was on Love on Netflix. I did three seasons. Okay. Uh, Love Life on HBO Max just came out. I was that's only one season, but uh, I did that from 2014 to 17. Uh huh. Last season came out 2018. Oh, dope, dope. dope. Did- but yeah, when I went to there, that was when the relationship was like, ah, uh, she How didn't get it. Now, let me ask you: this. If she'd have got it, would you have kept? Would you have kept? You, you, I mean, because you really dug her though. I, I, oh, will... she was shit. She was lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She but was lit. It, I, I'm gonna tell you something that, that fucking, you know, because I don't know if you know, but I, I've talked about it on the show. Is I, you know, I had a son and I got married again. Oh, congrats. I didn't know any of this happened. Well, it's, uh, wait, no. <laughs> congrats, congrats are, are, wait past to the end. Through. Wait to the end. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. So we had, so we, she, she was a fan of the podcast. Um, she came to New York basically to get me right. Unbeknownst to me, I was being hunted, you know, and, uh, and then we ended up, she ended up getting pregnant and I was like, I was 52, had no kids. And I was like, yeah, I mean, she cool. Like we get, you know, I, I have enough. You know what I'm saying? I have enough breadth of knowledge to handle this, whatever comes up. So, but this is funny what you're talking about. It's um, when you start to, when a, when a chick is with you and you say, even if you don't say it, but there's an air of who you are, right? Yeah. And they like, oh yeah, this he's dope, he's creative, he's... But when you show that you're even more than you said you were she has to start looking at herself because now she goes well am i hey mom (laughs) how you doing (laughs) yeah you go we'll get you out the out the frame (laughs) (laughs) well they'll go they'll go wait a minute am i enough do you know what i mean (laughs) but rather than say to you man i'm feeling insecure i don't feel like i may feel like you're moving on and leaving me behind so that you could just say because like i said you liked your chick you you would have probably just said nah yo uh, yo no this is the crazy thing man i'm an open guy i'm a very self-aware guy so i i have those conversations right so i'm i like to be let it be known i'm aware that's what's happening i i'm 100 here it is all in your head and that right. has nothing to do with me. Right, right. And But she didn't believe you. No. But th- th- this is my point, is because it's in their head, there's nothing. Like, you, like you can't fix a broken clock. You can't, make a, you can't make a clock less broken when it ain't broken in the first place. If yeah, exactly. You, if you're not cheating, you can't not cheat more. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's my love language. Yo. Women don't realize a, a nigga's love language is showing up every day and not doing half the shit you don't even know I'm not doing anymore. <laughs> that you could be doing. Yeah, it's like you yeah. don't even understand. I'm doing the most by not yeah. doing the most. Yeah, It's almost like you. what you should do is get all the phone numbers and bring them in every night, like receipts. Like, here you go, just so you know. <laughs> Bam. Not calling Bam. These. <laughs> these are all the numbers I'm not calling, just so you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, then you're being no one, abusive. No one, Yo, no one, that's the thing, like, not being monogamous is a choice that you make every day. Yes. Like, everyone's always upset when you cheated. No one's happy you didn't. You know, it's funny, I worked for the phone company my whole life, right? And it always, people, when the, when you, back in the days when motherfuckers had landlines, how many times did you, I mean, even in your lifetime, how many times you pick up the phone, the dial tone wasn't, was there? Boom, boom, boom. The one time the dog tone's not there, yo, this is some bullshit. You like dog, but we we've been working to keep this shit going. <laughs> when the last time I haven't been in your house since '92? Like, what are you what are you talking about? But it, it, the thinking is, the minute the dog tone is not there, everybody's panicking and they don't see the work that's being done every day. 
to make that dial tone be there. And and I think that taking that for granted is is, is yes. Yeah, like even my girl now, like so I'm I'm like yo. She be like, you got a spot? I'm like, whoa! I don't be like, you got to meet it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's good that you jump on it right away because a lot of guys might not be able. That's your being like what you said. You being self aware. A lot of guys would be like, yeah, yeah. Was, why, was, why you wanted to do something or what? You know. Well, that crazy. also comes from the. Now he knows that it, you know, twenty-two year old Jordan Rock didn't know that necessarily. Yeah, 22, 22 yeah. year old Jordan Rock would have been tap dancing. Right. Yeah. What, what do you mean, babe? What do you mean? Okay. Uh, can I do something for you? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll be like, yo, go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, look, this is happening. Yeah. You, you are my side bitch. Comedy. <laughs> I have no side. First of all, I have no sides. But I'm saying my my comedy is my is my my main bitch. chick. That's yes, my wife. yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. My wife. Everything else is my side bitch because I can't I can't do things for you without doing this. I'm not going to be happy without this. I'm not going to have the things. And even if you leave, I'm not going to have the things that I want for me if I let you fuck this up. So I'm not going to. And, I'm, you know, it's funny because, Harry, we have said this before. And I, it's funny how, like, the old principles come back. I would go, you got to be, as a man, you got to be strong enough to be uh, strong enough as a man to protect her from her emotions and her your emotions. Her emotions. Yeah. <laughs> you from her emotions and the relationship from her emotions because let uh, leaving it unchecked it will f it, she will fuck up everything and <laughs> yeah. it's got nothing to do like you said like i'm not even and you gotta sometimes you gotta protect her from like everything even your own feelings like that's why a lot of men feel frustrated in relationships i know i do at times where you have to put your emotions aside like i can't even be sometimes angry or depressed in front of her or whatever, because then I got to console her for your uh, because I'm angry and depressed. You know what I mean? Like now her day is ruined. Like, yeah, that's why you just shut up and say, I'm tired. You just quit. You go. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just tired. Don't worry about it. Because uh, it's weird when we're dealing with something. We just want her. I want her far away from it. Let me figure yeah, this just out. Chill. Yeah. Just let want, me sit here and block. Yeah. <laughs> but when they're going through something, they want you in the shit with them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm and, like, yo, I'm not a teddy bear. Yeah. I'm a person. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard. And you just, uh, I'm tired. That's what I find myself. I'm tired. You're, you're a, a, a security dog. What do you call it? A, what do they call it? Uh, a pet. Uh, what do you call it? A pet? An emotional uh, support animal. An emotional what support. Yeah, that's what it is. just going to pet me. You can't. I'm a human being. It, right. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like women. This is the thing I, I've realized. Like, this is what, uh, we, what us men do. We get into arguments and we get this look on our face because we're trying to realize how we even got here because right, 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 we're right. in the argument and we're like, yo, I know I did something. Right, right. Or at least I didn't do all this, though. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> I know the dishes is a problem, right? Right, right, right. right. But they can't be this the can't problem. Be. We can't be having a three-hour <laughs> conversation about the dishes. You got to be an accountant. You got to, and the old school accountant, the nigga with the visor and the, and this thing, right? You got the adding machine. Adding up. It's not adding up, bro. Oh, it is not adding up. Not I, it again. Now, I know I did something. Right, right, right. Granted, I did something. It's really more like digging away and you're finding the root underneath. The root is damaged. You're like, what is this surface area shit? You got to find out where the poison. You're like, no, this is not about dishes. This is about feelings and emotions that led to the, now we're using the dishes. That as is a, a problem yeah that is not the problem the problem yeah <laughs> it's a funny so so I, I i got married and then i'm like so i i never said you know we don't never say yo this is the dude i am but apparently this was the dude i was this is why you came from england to get me right but then here's what i think that dudes don't understand if you are even more than what the perception was it brings out her insecurity because now she's wondering if she can measure if she she can measure up and and this is not you because you like i know you couldn't measure up in the first place like you're not dope as me <laughs> like you yeah. you're not supposed to be dope as me but i i dig you you dope because i think you dope because whatever parts i'm missing you fulfill that so it was weird because she met me she she heard about me i did juan epstein i did siphon peter rosenberg's juan epstein and she heard me on juan epstein became a fan 
six years she was telling her boyfriend in england you need to listen to this nigga she he didn't she broke up with him she came found me we had a baby and then after we had the baby somehow i don't know nothing nothing i say is valid you know everything i don't i got thousands of motherfuckers but i mean jordan you, you've even talked to me about some funky shit that was going on when you was in your yo d well you, you know what i'm saying we've had yeah. chris d stefano Giannis, lenny marcus uh you name it i've talked to niggas about it. niggas i was the go-to nigga all of a sudden now i don't know nothing so it was funny because this is the thing that really made me trip uh cypher she still this she don't listen to my podcast no more because i don't can you talk about her i don't know well i don't i don't, <laughs> no, I don't i don't know nothing nothing i say is valid right but she's still listening to one app and them right so what so cypher says yo my man dante told me about this bum bum they talk about women such and such he goes to peter you know you know dante peter goes yeah, yeah, he helped me through my divorce when I was going through my divorce and blah, blah, because I don't know, you know, Peter, Peter had a double blowy in a limo, right? And then told his girl he had a double blowy, right? Because he's, he's Jewish and he can't what? help himself, right? And then the whole thing went to shit. And I was like, dog, don't forget, you Peter Rosenberg. Like, you deserve to get a double blowy every now and then. For, right, right. You know. and, and even if you did, I, and you'll feel bad about it, apologize. But I mean, it really, that's the... Honestly, don't admit to cheating unless you plan on leaving anyway. Exactly. <laughs> not gonna, you're not going to... So he, he goes, yeah, Dante helped me through my divorce. He helped me move on. And yeah, well, Dante said... Da, 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 da. So she calls me up. Yo, they talking about he goes, yeah, you know, he got married. He got a girl from England. She was listening to our show and, and he got a little baby now. And they're like talking, man. She goes, oh, oh, they talking about they're talking about us and talking about the baby. And and in my mind, I'm like, not that I, I disrespect them, but dog, they fuck with me because I'm dope. Like, I'm a nigga that figures it out. Yeah. But you sucking the dick of niggas who suck my dick without saying it. You know, not the saying that they suck my dick. But you know what I mean? You sucking the nigga dick who not sucking, who's sucking my dick, who's asking me uh, advice and stuff. But you listen to them, and now now we're validated because they say we validated. When the reality is, they don't know your name. You just my wife that had my kid is what gives you legitimacy. So how am I not, like... You know what I'm saying? It's mind-boggling that the, the the change becomes from your personal insecurity where you now... Well, they'll change the narrative rather than... And they, maybe, and sometimes I think they don't fully understand what they're dealing with. No, it's, it's not. It's a subconscious thing, too. They feel insecure or something, and then so the narrative changes, right? So they have to change the narrative to, to try to... Pull, it's almost like to pull you back, to take you down a little bit, yeah, so you're not as far away. But I also think it's subconscious. I don't think it's always malicious. No, but, I don't even think they know. I don't even. Yeah, think I don't know. think it's. Yeah, I don't think it was a. I'll tell you the thing that was really um, telling. We was in couples therapy, and uh, she was like, you know, she tells the the, the therapist um, sometimes. The, the 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 legend is bigger than the real thing or some shit and i was like in my mind like bitch you crazy i go let me explain something to you you know she was like you have these issues with your father and his like i go first of all you know what i told you you don't know the whole story you know the uh, the things that i told you you're not a therapist and you don't have your life together your life is this baby and me like, you haven't done extraordinary thing. I didn't come, I didn't go to England looking for you. You came looking for me. So don't get it twisted. I said, you'll never be able to define me as a man. Be clear. I know, I, I know you three years. I know me 53. So if you try to tell me who the fuck I am, but based on what the fuck, just don't. Because I'll never give a fuck about what you think. Wait, is there an age difference? Yeah, big. What's the age difference? 32. <laughs> Thirty-two. Okay. I was fifty-two. She was. What's her age? Thirty-two. There's a twenty-year age gap. Okay, she was thirty-two. Okay. But you okay. Know, I'm not an old. I'm an old nigga, but I'm not an old nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
Like I'm not like you would. You're not, not the average 52 year old guy. And, I mean, Jordan no, not at all. would be like Jordan wouldn't be like, yo, I'm not talking to this old nigga. You know what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for it. Right? Like, comedy, comedy's all like, look at Sharad. Look at Sharad. Sharad is the last of the rock star. <laughs> like, Sharad is still the fucking living the rock star shit. Yeah. And still learning and growing and. and so it's like it's a different fifty. Some how old is Sharad now? Fifty. He's got to be getting there. Fifty, fifty. I, I, I gonna out it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do he give a fuck? You know, Sharad don't give. Forty five. That's how old he is. <laughs> All right. Well, 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 I'm I'm saying. I mean, Godfrey's fifty two. He look younger than you. <laughs> like, yeah, Godfrey, Godfrey great. Like Godfrey looks great. Yeah, yeah. He Godfrey look like he's twenty four still. So, but you know, I don't really even give a fuck. But it's it's what I realize is that recognition. It's like when it's, when the table when when the the cards is on the table. When you really are righteous about what you believe, and you're credible about what you believe, that's scary to people who ain't righteous about that. Well, it's like they don't have the audience. You know, they don't have the they don't have uh, the backing to. They don't feel as confident in their beliefs as you because you not only do you get to say it, you hear it. Every like people yeah. tell you this is funny, this is true. Right, right, right. Whereas if she was confident fully enough, like that wouldn't matter. But yeah. since the confidence is a problem, then you know your since her lack of confidence is a problem, your overconfidence is a problem. Yeah, it's even more so a confidence because the disparity between the two is going in. We're going in opposite opposite directions, and it's like. And I've I've found I mean I don't know if you find that to be the case. It's like that you um, but look here's the crazy thing. Look at fucking Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Like that. Yeah. Like even there's a disparity in confidence. And then you watch this chick chop him down, chop him down, chop him down till she's shitting in his bed. Like I've never fucked up that much that I had a bitch shitting in my bed. You know what I mean? Like, hey man, I think. That whole situation, they were abusive to each other. And with that being said, we got to look at what Johnny Depp was going through. He just lost millions of dollars. He was in a weird part of his career where he was fucked out of money financially. What do you mean because of her, though? Saying because no, no, no. She, she just showed up. Wait. And he was dealing with, with losing a lot of money. His how, agents was he, and how was he losing money before her? His agents, his managers ran off with a bunch of money. That's when they met. Oh, really? So imagine you a button, you a up and coming movie actress. Yeah. You get with this big guy. You think he's like this, but he's actually in the, like a really weird part. And you're trying to like, yeah. you know, to assimilate come with him, come up with him. Yeah. It's gonna be some beef, you know. Like a nigga might, a nigga stress, man. I, I've never lost a million dollars. No, yeah. I you know, I work, I'm doing the comic strip. Two two nights from now, I'm stressed, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to miss that spot. That yeah. that eighty five. I, I don't want to get that eighty five out. Yeah, I feel you. I feel. So I can you. imagine what's going on in that relationship. You know. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's a you know, your your your, your co I think we tend to you have to as a man you have to be more cognitive about it, like because if it, if you're if you're reactional, that's the beginning of the end. Like, yeah, you're reactional. You're that's yeah. uh, niggas. That's what I've realized about niggas in general. If you're running off emotions or fighting off emotions, you already lost. Yeah, yeah. That's why when we watch a fight, it's like two people in a fight. Yeah, it's a nigga not thinking, and, and it's a nigga looking where he's swinging. Where he's swinging, you know. The nigga that that's not thinking, he's like, oh, he runs in with his head down. Yeah. The nigga thinking is like, whoop, whoop, whoop. it's over. <laughs> You know, I, I went to uh, I went to the Javante Davis uh, Romero fight in the bar. <laughs> Nigga, same thing. First of all, let me say this: Brooklyn is alive and well, and Baltimore fit right in. <laughs> like that, the, uh, there was a seamless, a seamless hoodness between Baltimore hood and Brooklyn hood. They fit in. Very well, like you couldn't tell the difference. It's called Instagram. <laughs> Instagram is Instagram is the link of the hoods these yeah. days, man. Oof. Thirty-five person fight on the floor. I have floor tickets. Thirty-five niggas on the floor. 
Niggas losing Prada sneakers and <laughs> all kinds of shit. Gold chains flying all over the place on the floor. So it was real hood. But uh, I, 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 I went with somebody, and uh, the minute he, he dropped Romero, I was like, we got to go. Let's go. Snatched. We was out the door because... Nigga, I you knew, I, you knew. Oh, this is it was already tense. It was hood. He Javante was on the ropes going like this. Ah! And I, we, we were watching that on the on the monitors. <laughs> sure enough, somebody shot up outside. People was running. I was like, yeah, but I'm um, a good fight though. But but what I'm saying is Romero was emotional talking shit, like you said. Javante was just Waiting for the moment. You got. You're right. You can't be. You can't be. You can't let emotion have a seat at the table because you you're gonna miss. Yo, it's so many. Like it's yeah. We don't control shit no more, man. Yeah. You know, our phone is in our hand all day. We getting soul shit. Our senses are on an overload. The only thing we can control is how we react to things. Yeah. Yeah. That's the last freedom we got. And that's the that's the thing about relationships. You have to stay in control. You have to, because not in control. I mean, and and if you ask any dude, uh, not being in control is never attractive. Yeah, it's, yo, I'm not going to lie. I haven't had uh, my own apartment in like two years. Yeah. And I will say the pussy that I get now, like, it feels different than when they were coming to my place. <laughs> one way, one way. Uh, yeah, like, I'm just, I'm not in full control, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause you feel a certain way, and she don't feel a certain way. Cause you still the nigga on Netflix. You know what I mean? She's, yeah, yeah. It's you in your head going, yo, I should be better, and that that's why it's so important for men to put their happiness first. Because your happiness, like your happiness, and, and and this seems like I'm being chauvinistic about it, but I'm not. It's because my your happiness includes her, like. Yeah. What kind of girl you got if she's unhappy? Like, what kind of dude are you if you? So part of your 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 ex, the vein of your existence is is satisfying her, in a sense. And without that, you're not happy about yourself. So it's like she don't even give a fuck about where you know some chick is. You know, first on the on the off, you get some pussy and and you're not in your own place. She, nigga, she's just happy to be there, but you still holding yourself to a standard that you don't. That she's not even thinking about. Yeah. When you say not your own place, what's the what's the living arrangement, Jordan? What's uh, I'm just I'm getting ready to move in with my girl. Uh, we going to L.A. I've been oh, now okay. in family homes stacking. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah I, so just on the I road, you know. Yeah. I did the same thing during the pandemic. I was at my dad's the whole time. Yeah. So it's like, like I yeah, I, yeah I, but I went from being the 18 year old nigga with his own place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you feel funny about it, and it's just. But the standard is, I mean, that's the thing. We are harder on ourselves than they are on us. You know, like you, we, I had a dude, I had a dude who got a bunch of consultations with me. He was in Puerto Rico, right? Dude from Puerto Rico. And he goes, he was a like a Walmart greeter, right? So he had a little older, little cougar mommy that kept coming in to see a nigga. And she, oh, hi, hi. And he's kissing him, kissing him on his, hi, how are you? And, right? He was like, yo, I think I'm going to ask her out. And then he goes, yo, but, uh, yo, I don't have a car. And I'm like, at what point, like, this bitch has been flirting with you the whole time. Did she ask you if you have a car? Was a car a deal breaker? She just coming in, throwing you all this affection. You, let's be honest, you a Walmart greeter. You she's not really expecting much from you to begin with. Dog, she's good with whatever you got. He's like, but I don't have my car. You know, my car's in the shot. I'm like, dog. I, I, it's, here's a funny thing. I said, um, I had a dude, uh, was talking to me about, um, how he, you know, he grew up, his mom was not really supportive, right? Mom had him when he was 19. Mom's really not supportive. You ain't shit. She don't know how to communicate. She's just, you know, young mom. Plus she's an immigrant. So it's like, she's 19 with a kid she's in this country where they hate her you know she's already hated so she's not really equipped to have a child anyway right yeah. fast forward this kid grows up with this low self-esteem 
and he he's you know anytime a chick likes him too much he don't like her because he don't like himself so any chick that likes him too much it's like yo what's wrong with you you don't you're not smart enough to know i ain't shit like like clearly if you like basically a self-sabotage yeah yeah i mean i'm in i'm in a club that i i'm in a i'm in a club that i would never want to be in you know what i mean so so i was like first of all the, the person who has defined what your value is you you can't look at your mom as a you know she's a 40 year old for late 40 year old woman now i said but you got to look at her as a 19 year old with a child with a child even though she's 40 now like she didn't get to develop because of all of these things being an immigrant being 19 years old being not having no help and so you're I, so, so you have somebody who has an emotionally grown in a way that now is dictated because of her age alone now she's telling you what your value is or what your value is it's like bitch you haven't even really figured your own life out you just happen to survive and older but you're not no expert you don't yeah. I, I was like do you she got a man no she's in and out of relationships i said so this is somebody who's not i mean you know what i'm saying if you're going to talk to somebody about comedy talk to chrissy exactly yeah yeah talk to somebody who did it yeah don't talk to some open mic and don't ask no open mic or what should i do but ask a nigga who's done it i said your mom has never been good at at um you know at picking relationships at at navigating life and now all of a sudden because she's your mother because she has a status in your life you think that it still matters like that shit don't matter after after you get out like the, the how old was the dude He's like thirty-seven. Yeah, bro. You're after after twenty-five. You get to blame your parents till twenty-five. I say twenty-six, but we yeah, like, twenty-five. You know? After that, that it's all on you. You a weirdo. You the th you the thing. Yeah. Now, did your mom teach you that, or was it your brothers, or or is it was it what was it? Teach me what that that to take responsibility, like to be self-aware. Did it? What what, what do you think? God got you to that point i'm the youngest of seven okay so like a lot of people just have never had six people look at six to seven other people maybe eight look you know that. depending on like you do something and everybody go yo what the fuck are you doing <laughs> why would you do that that's dumb like people don't get that like people don't grow up with like a level of self-awareness yeah. these days <laughs> Yeah. Like and also my mom is my mom is happy at 45. Yeah. Uh she had a first child at 20. Right. So she, uh she yeah. Her first rodeo. You know what I mean? Yeah, and 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 you know, some people like my mother would be somebody else's grandmother. Right. But right. you know, the stuff that your grandmother would tell you, you'd be like, Oh, what granny though. Yeah. But luckily I didn't have to have that filter, you know. It was really it was coming from my mom. Right. And then I had six I you know, I had five older brothers to look up to. Yeah, you know, and yeah, then I just spent a lot of time by myself in New York. So it's like, and I tell jokes and I write. So yeah, yeah I had to be self aware. Growing yeah. up, did they give you any dating advice? Is there anything that you got from them about it? You know, you have older brothers. Yo, I was a dater. Yo, I was I I, I was a dater. I was a kid. I had a girlfriend. I had girlfriends in high school. Yeah, you know, like I wasn't just the dude that was on the football team. Like, like chicks wanted to fuck me just because I, I, you know, I, I was on the team. Like I always had a personality. Like I always had to have, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I had to have a personality. <laughs> so yeah, and I always had. I was always in relationships. So I did high school relationship. I did, yeah. you know, I did the first year high school relationship. Serial relationship, dude. Like a serial going from one relationship to the next, pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I can say that. And then I had that five year gap, five six years where I was just doing me but i feel like you know some people either do it before or after yeah yeah some people never do it you know do what never get that chance to just kind of realize it's funny I, I i helped this dude who was 50 was going through divorce at 54 and had his first threesome at 54 like i was talking to him through <laughs> his first threesome. that's and, hilarious yeah you know those stories uh, yeah it's a it's a funny story because um have you ever had a threesome? Had several. Okay, so 
the rule to a threesome is that she picks the girl. Right. She picks. She says, I love you, my nigga. Yo, I, I I can tell you my I can tell you my stories, rules, man. I, I can tell people there's rules. Yo, I had right. two in my life. What happened? What happened? Tell first us the story. One, first one, she picked the girl. Great time. Right. Second time, I picked the girl. A <laughs> lot of reassurance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of no, man. That's the nah, you don't gotta do it like I like how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing is, everything has to go through your girl. Yes. You kiss her first. You touch her first. You fuck her first. You first, first, first. Um. So my man, <laughs> I was like, and every time I know it, because he kind of got to this point where the threesome was because of uh, the threesome was, I walked him through it, like, step by step. Well, she's probably gonna blah blah blah. Yo, she did. I'm like, yeah, I know, nigga. It's not my first rule. And then I said to him, look, everything goes through your girl. So the girl, she got, she picked the girl, brought her friend in. I was like, everything goes through your girl first, unless she directs you to f first, right? Yeah. <laughs> first, and and if you think about it, it's just etiquette. It's just. Good etiquette, just like, relationship etiquette. Just like yo, you're the first person. You're the, you're a priority here. Like, you brought me to the party. I'm your guest. <laughs> I'm your guest here. Listen, but like I always say, three. You can't be. You can never be too eager for three. So you gotta act like what? Huh? Me? You think you think of me? I mean, if you, <laughs> I mean, I'm, if you, want. I wouldn't even think about it. To honestly, like. <laughs> <laughs> so so I was like, so he, the girl, and him. They're in a hotel room, right? He's he's fifty four years old. It's a twenty three year old and a twenty five year old, right? Uh, beautiful. Like the fact that I was even able to walk him through this. But I said to him, he said, "Yo, I think it's gonna happen." I kept calling him, "Yo, listen, everything goes through the girl." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, I heard you. I heard you." I go, he was like, "Yo, it's gonna happen tomorrow." Um, he was on his way. I go, "Yo, remember what I said." Everything goes to the girl. First round, everything, they laying out, they laying in the bed. His girl goes to the bathroom. No, the, the girl, the other girl, they're all sleeping. The girl goes to get up to the bathroom. He grabs her, right, pulls her back, pops his dick in her mouth. The other, his girl wakes up with this chick blowing him. Mm. No <laughs> nah, no good. Ruin the whole no thing. Good. No bueno. No, nope. unless he was uh, unless he was already planning on breaking up. Right. So, <laughs> that is a hell of a way to do it. I mean, if you got to yeah. go out, that's the best breakup. No one can really argue with that. Yeah. A good blowy. She goes, "What is this?" And he, like, <laughs> like a novella. <laughs> Better way is this. <laughs> da, da, da. Da, da, da. So, I, so I go. So she gets dressed, and she. I said, "Did you?" Did you chase her? Did you go get her? And nah, nah, just I just stayed and got hit. I was like, son, do you understand? I called you nine times to tell you not to do what you did. Every time you you said to me, this is what, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He assured me over and over. And then I was like, he's like, well, how can I salvage? I go, no, you don't salvage. It's over, bro. No, it's over. It's over. You might as well just fuck with the chick that was blowing you. Exactly, because <laughs> at least you know what it is. Right, right, right. And y'all gotta, y'all gotta have a super honest relationship. And the next threesome, don't think that the rules don't account to her. Everything goes to her. She's the yeah. girl now, so it don't nothing change. Don't nothing change. But it's uh, you know the the self awareness is, you know, I, I what I realize is uh, yeah, I mean that's dope because I didn't have nothing but sisters. Yeah. So my self awareness was watching them crazy chicks. Just watching how they operate and watching motherfuckers like pull their hair out, trying yeah. trying to fuck. Just you got no sisters. I have one sister. One sister. Oh, her. one sister. She was right up, right on top of me and uh and age. She was like five years older than me. We went to school. We were going to school together, but uh, she graduated when I was in like sixth grade. Okay. All right. Yeah. After that, I was in the crib by myself. Yeah. But luckily, I had the internet. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read it. I can think of, I could go to forums and if I wanted to do something, I could Google it and research it thoroughly before I did it.
<laughs> what did you What did you research uh, life wise? What was like, one of those things that you would have researched? Dating like wise or weed, weed? Drums, oh, just weed? Like yeah, you know, like anything. How are you? Oh, you 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 were foggy a little bit. You I was okay. Hold on, I'll fix it. Anyway, yeah, yeah. But did you did you did you Google like chick stuff? Like really? never real, not really. That was all like that was all like experience. Yeah, yeah. And then like people telling me things like yeah, like you telling me stuff like I, everything was really just experience. Yeah, yeah. And you always had niggas saying, "What are you doing?" What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. What about what are you doing? Someone's always like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Yo, what what is this? You should like <laughs> that's hilarious. That you just I mean it's good because then you don't make the mistakes that people Yeah, make. yo, I I never get the spaz. You, you spaz when you're the youngest, the youngest person, the youngest person streams in the house, everybody's like, yo, what the fuck, what the fuck is are you, you doing? doing, yo? Like, you know, like when when everybody's young and stuff like that, you fight your cousins, you do all this stuff, and everybody starts to hold grudges, and that shit grows. With I came after all of that. And they were like, hey, yo, I came after all of that, brother. Already, you know, rich type shit. Like yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at everything, you know, all of the pettiness, all of the everything. Yeah, yeah. Do this, and I'm just like, all right, let's just not do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's lucky. You're lucky. But it's funny because watching, I was watching you. Yeah, I was watching your set on uh, on Netflix, and I was like, "Man, he's so old." You know what I mean? Like he's an old. Like Jordan's a young old nigga. <laughs> yeah, man. Been around. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And to watch you just even talking about the generation underneath you, I thought that was really interesting. You like yo, and I was like interested because I don't know them at all. You know, I don't know. The difference between millennials and Z. Yeah, I'm just like, all right. So, so I was like, all right, George, tell me, teach me something this time. I want to know, you know. So it was really interesting that that um, it, it, it it's funny too because I I realized that the trauma, like um, I was talking to this dude and he went through this trauma, and so um, you know, self esteem is so low, you know, people have gone through kind of you know, sexual abuse and all kinds of trauma. And then what you do is you're trying to survive um, like you have to survive. So say you, you go through some kind of molestation shit or some shit like that. You, you, you're you not going to kill yourself, so you got to survive. So you have to, at, a, at 10 years old, you got to find a way to move forward, right? Yeah. So it, it's I, I've talked about this a couple of times. How I remember I talked about this chick was molested at 10 yeah a dad was molesting her at 10 and uh she uh uh so she was just like fucking everybody right so you know just super promiscuous and i realized the reason why you know at 10 years old she's not even ready to deal with the intimacy and sex and so what she basically did in her mind was in her 10 year old mind was a how do I how do I deal with intimacy without dealing with the pain of being taken advantage of by somebody who's older? Yeah. And what she in her mind at 10 years old, well, I'll just sex is different from intimacy. So I'll just have a lot of sex with whoever I want. It won't mean anything. And then when I decide for it to be intimate, I'll decide to be for it. so it's just she's just a hoe. Just kind of getting <laughs> She's so, sexually active. She's a hoe. Uh, yeah, well, we, we all are. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm not. I'm not even going politically correct it. But all right, if you want to, it's fine. But uh, she was out there in the script, mm. giving people opportunities that didn't. Actually, she was using them. Yes. As much as they were using her, because it was sort of like if you got a, an eyedropper full of arsenic, and you put it under your tongue, you're gonna die. But if you got an eyedropper full of arsenic and you you drip it in a baby pool. Right, you dilute it. So the more sex she had, the more the intimacy was diluted, and so it wasn't a matter of I. And I get what you're saying. Like if you, this is where you are sexually, and you're exploring these things, because there's a, there's an intention to explore this sexuality as opposed to doing it as a as a result of trauma, is where I say you're a hoe. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's it's not a it's not a intentional it's not intentional. It's 
I'm I'm trying to I guess substitute for something else that I'm lacking. And and it's such a uh it's it's her trying to cope with intimacy that has been violated in her mind. And 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 then but the problem is now you 28, right? And you're still losing using the solution that you came up when you were 10 years old and moved forward and all the things that you've learned in the course of 28 years different relationships and different situations you've been in you you um you never reassess the problem or the trauma and figure out a way to deal with it in a better way yeah nobody wants to listen to kendrick lamar they'd rather listen to drake yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and it's funny because you always had somebody go nigga nigga what's like yeah i was always just Someone was always calling me on my shit. What do you think the biggest mistake you were making was all the time, Jordan? What was the biggest thing that you kept doing? What was my biggest mistake? Or most most common, repetitive, like you. I'm a pacer, man. I heard Kanye's drive slow. I took that shit serious, man. (laughs) Drive slow. In what sense? What do you mean? Drive slow. I I don't know Jordan to make a lot of the same mistakes. Yeah, you know drop I mean? slow. Yeah, I'm I'm a uh, like, bro. I like. Let's put it like this. Yo, they told me. You tell me, yo, bro. Cops is killing niggas, man. Mm. Bet. All you right. told me that. That's installed in me. I'm good. The video come out. It don't make it any realer to me now that there's a video, believe- nigga. Y'all told me what was going on. Like I read it in a book. It's it, like why? Like it, it was no disconnect in this shit. Like right, right, right. I don't. So, I, I you don't remember you making a lot of the same mistakes. No, I fuck up. It's like oh, I fucked up. Somebody tell me about it. You know, some people get mad when they hear about themselves. Like I said, I had to hear about myself my yeah, whole life. Yeah. So it's like, please give me. It's not even when you give me feedback that I don't think is good. I take that shit in, and I'm a different person after that. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. So yeah, I'm 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 all about going forward, man. Yeah, that's a lot. It take you, you don't. I don't even think you even understand how how ahead of the game that is. How ahead of the game. I mean, I'm I mean, I you know, it's 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 hard for somebody to say what is it like to be you because you like nigga me. Yo, it's, look, this is the thing. Now, as I'm as I'm 31, man. I'm so happy to have a sad, rich archetype <laughs> at the head of the family. Right, right. Because, like, niggas be like, I'm trying to get rich. I'm trying to do this. I'm like, nigga, we rich right now. Right, right. If you if you had more money, you'd be paying everybody's health insurance. Right. <laughs> you get a phone call every day like, yo, auntie broke a hip. You'd be like, yo, I don't even know this bitch. Right, right. Yeah, but, you know, we need 5000 Not like. Yeah, you'd be like everybody want to be famous, but it's like, bro, if you were famous, bro, you couldn't go get coffee, you couldn't go do nothing. Yeah, yeah. like I'm all for the pacing of this thing. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm. This is this is a scenic route. I, like, you gotta watch. Things gotta watch the last episode of uh, Atlanta. The last episode of Atlanta <laughs> is like, yo, fans on a fucking is like this running through Paris like wildin'. Right. And like she's like her friends are like, yo, what y'all no, first it starts off her friend like this girl is in Paris and her friends are like, like, yo, what are you doing here? How do you how do you fly us here? She's like, I'm here to pee on this dude. They like, what? Crazy. Da-da-da. Uh and they go on this crazy adventure. But the whole thing was be careful how you want to get to things. Yeah. Because you can get to the most beautiful shit by doing some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? and then you're unhappy with it it's let me ask you this let me you know uh and i didn't i didn't yeah it's funny because i didn't you know i i see you as such a different entity as your brothers and stuff i mean um how did the whole will smith thing affect you in any way uh yo my show's been selling out really <laughs> nah. really uh, uh, when i went to dc the week after bro that shit was like a press conference yeah did, they, uh, did you talk about it or no? I talked about it recently on like Kevin on stage. I did. I did keep your distance. Yeah, and I just threw out some jokes. I don't. I don't really. Yeah, I mean, I, I I played the internet for the day. I talk. I put up like a tweet and I saw it. I saw let it. people go crazy, and then I deleted it before fucking USA Today and everybody came through. Uh-huh. Uh huh. 
Yeah, I, and that's more for that's more that's trippy for him. It's trippy because yes, yeah, my brother's dealing with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for me, it was interesting just because I feel like I just been a part, a uh, step aside from all the major stories and all the major beefs this year. Mm-hmm. I go from Pete and everybody blowing up my phone about Pete and Kanye, right? To fucking uh, to yeah, this yeah. Yeah, and then let alone all the other stuff of uh, you know real life shit that's going on. So yeah, uh, it re- that the slap just made me more happy to be me, more happy with my pacing. And yeah. well, you know, it, it's it's funny you talk about you just something you just said. Yo, you want to wrap this, Harry, and then we will do this behind. Let's the- talk on the Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Yeah. Um, we gotta do a little bit out, a little f- couple more minutes on the Patreon. And, um, go, 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 subscribe to that Patreon. You know, like and subscribe. Sound off in the comments, my nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, hit me on TikTok. Yeah, tell them what the, what the TikTok is, dog. I'm not on fucking TikTok. No, oh. you're not. <laughs> nah, TikTok is a Chinese. Uh, it's a Chinese Trojan horse. All right, whatever. What, what, anything you want to plug other than the Pete Davidson thing? Anything else you want to plug? Uh, Pete Davidson and presents the best friend streaming on Netflix. Uh, keep your distance set. I'm probably going to upload that to YouTube in the next week or two, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, watch Love Life season two on HBO Max. No, dope, dope. Harry, talk to me. Uh, you should find all my stuff at Harry Trajanian. Yo, you know, Google me, bitch. Y'all know where I'm at, Dante Nero. D-A-N-T-E And don't forget to sign up for the Patreon G-Y-B-B Get your balls back W-W-D-D What would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution Being podcasted Check out YouTube Man School 202 Consultations DanteNero.com Click on Consult You can talk to me direct Um, We are out